And we're back. Hey. All right, we're back here in Echo with TJ's route. We got into a sidetrack last time. Let's go ahead and do this. <laughs> I was trying to get to the voice. <laughs> TJ is strangely calm as we sit in the motel room. It's been about half an hour since we last, since we found the last note. After Carl lost his lunch in the bushes, Julian drove him back home, and we had to put the scavenger hunt on hold. TJ wants us all to be there for it. Julian is still with us, and I keep wondering when the hell he's going to go home. He just joined our little group today, and TJ acts like he needs to be part of this for some reason. He barely even knew Sydney. But that doesn't really matter. This whole thing is so ridiculous. It's so obvious that Sydney had nothing to do with this scavenger hunt. Somebody's planting these damn notes, and they have enough for me. I sit with my back against the headboard of the bed, staring at my legs as TJ tries to defend this whole thing. Really bother you, Chase, then you don't have to come. I bristle a bit. You were insisting everyone else go, why not me? I force myself not to look at Julian. I do want you to come, but you're so angry. I've never seen you like this. Oh. oh, I have. We all have. Chase is just acting like his old self now. Jess sits there in the corner on her laptop as usual, smirking. It pisses me the fuck off. Yeah. Listen, whoever's <laughs> writing these has it out for me. Look at what the last one said. He wrote them, and he always kind of teased you. It's just like him. I go quiet, looking away with a glare. What do you think the clues are implying about you, Chase? I think for a moment, I know. but it's hard with all the anger that keeps threatening to bubble to the surface. I... I don't know. I just don't like the sound of it, and honestly... I try to think of the right way to word what I'm going to say. If you respect me, you'd see that, and stop this stupid hunt. Whoa. It goes quiet for a moment, then Julian stands up. Hey, I'm gonna head out. Let me know when you guys decide to do tomorrow. I've got the whole day off. Oh, okay, man. Thanks so much for coming with us. TG gives the stag a side hug, and I try to keep myself from bristling. What's I only want TJ sexually attracted to me, says Chase. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know. Side hugs. Is. That's super sex. I mean, side hugs. TJ is about the equivalent of TJ sex, so. <laughs> TJ yeah. Chase, you're the most jealous man I know. You know other men? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my god. God, now Chase is becoming Leo. Oh, God, no. Yeah, yeah, no, watch like... your legs. Watch your legs. <laughs> Another man is touching my boy, TJ, yeah. by hugging him on the side? Fuck that. <laughs> That's Christian sex, okay? And TJ's Christian. <laughs> oh, no. So that's what the church was warning me about. <laughs> yes, baby. If you hug someone on the hiki side, hiki is that? <laughs> if you give someone a side, well, I love how they they bothered to make it clearly not sexual, which is why it's even more funny that Chase is like getting mad, right? They they didn't just say TJ and and Julian hug. Okay, that would be maybe a little bit reason. TJ gives Julian a side hug. hug. But I'll, I'll point this out. It's just like a little thing. I, for me, my brain like registers a side hug as being slightly weirdly more intimate than just a regular hug. Yeah. Because I get it. Because you don't side hug a stranger. But you could hug a stranger. But you wouldn't side hug them. Huh. I get that, I get that. Yeah, but frontal hugs can be like... Oh, of frontal course. Frontal hugs, hugs can be can. as close. Yeah, it's like, that could be as close or as not as close as you want it to be. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I get what you're saying. You only side hug people you care about and want to show you care about often in a non-sexual way. Which yeah. in some ways sometimes means that you care about them even more, right? Yeah. 
and that, that's the thing is obviously Chase is getting a little bit too maybe possessive of TJ I don't know that's what it feels like TJ can only be my friend you know the guy I haven't talked to since I left Echo uh no he did keep in contact with TJ until TJ went to college okay from so. what I understand I haven't talked to him in a year. Mm-hmm. Once Julian leaves out the door, TJ sits on the foot of the bed, looking at me. I completely respect you, Chase, but I think these are from Sydney. He's just teasing you. I don't say anything. Mike's think. facing the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> I don't say anything as TJ adjusts his mic, choosing to look at the wall. <laughs> feeling more unnerved by my own emotions than anything else. I don't feel like myself at all. I know I asked you this this morning, but if you think this is someone else's doing, who could it be? Jenna crosses her arms, looking at me earnestly. I sit there quietly for a moment, debating on whether or not I should tell them. I decided to have to, since neither of the others seem to see it. I think it's Flynn. What? I think it's Flynn and Carl. They're doing this whole thing. You can't be serious. Who else? Carl's the one that found that first note. I think Flynn gave it to him. The looks on Jenna and TJ's faces make me look away again. Am I going crazy? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, hey, that's... Crazy, I know. But you saw how Carl was acting today. How nervous he was. He even threw up. Carl does that sometimes. And he would know if he played his route, Chase. Well, I didn't in this route, now did I? <laughs> I slid my legs off the bed and hit them hang over the side, fully facing the wall now. I know how Flynn was back at the river, but even he wouldn't do that. Uh, Sam, you're a little close to your mic. Really? Oh, so, okay, so let me, turn, let me turn it that way. Okay. Is that better? Yeah, that's good. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's half, halfway facing to my right. <laughs> I look back at TG with a glare. What about those texts he's sending you? What? TJ's paws fly to his pocket, a shocked look on his face. Jenna looks between us. What? Flint sent Classic TJ a Leo text. Move what was that? Classic Leo move from Chase. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll point this out though. Chase did not pull the full Leo move of like texting other people saying like, "Oh, TJ's gonna be busy. He's he's not feeling well. I need to keep him safe and." help him feel better about everything. True. That's true. He's a few steps away from that. <laughs> Chase is showing some signs of issues, but i he's not full-blown Leo crazy levels. Yeah, me, 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 me. Yeah, me, 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 me to you too. <laughs> he's at least not holding his friends captive. That's true. Wow. <laughs> I, to, I don't know why when someone says something right before I'm about to do the voice it makes me giggle instead right and then you're like wait Sky stop I gotta do the voice I gotta prep <laughs> yep Flint's and TJ are text swearing at him I think he's been messaging you this whole time TJ's quiet just staring at me TJ is that true TJ stares at the floor for a moment, before finally looking up, his voice oddly calm. Yeah, well, he's angry, of, co of course he would be, but he has no reason to be riding the scavenger hunt. Flynn would never do that. You sure about that? TJ glares back at me, and now I can tell I've made him angry. Yes! Why would he do it in the first place? I don't have to think hard on that one. To hurt TJ. To ruin our friendship by making up lies about me. To just be a complete dick. Take your pick. 
That's absolutely ridiculous. I don't say anything, choosing a glare at the wall. <laughs> Jenna looks between us and shakes her head. All right, that's enough of this. Neither of you are acting like yourselves, so I think it's best we head to bed. All right? Whatever. I slide into bed on my side, still staring at the wall, listening as TJ gets up and goes to the bathroom. Jenna goes on typing on her computer. I leave her quietly, deciding that I'm going to have to do something to stop this. Man, that was a good Friday. Oh, Friday's not over yet. Hmm. Sneaking out of the motel room is probably the hardest part. They know that if they catch me at any point, it's over. At about 3 a.m., I slide out of the bed, listening to TJ snores, and watching Jenna's unmoving form curled up on the bed in front of me. Quietly, I dig around my bag for my keys, then slip out of the door into the night. I grip my teeth as my car starts up, imagining TJ or Jenna pulling back the curtains and seeing me sitting in the car. I've got excuses. I'm sick. I had to drive to the emergency room, or even I just couldn't sleep and wanted to get a snack somewhere. They're all suspicious, but should be enough to cover my ass if things go south. I drive along the quiet road. My surroundings almost black since the moon has set. It takes me a moment to find the side road that will take me to the shore. Once I do, I see one lonely orange light glaring in the middle of the parking lot. I park away from it at the edge of the lot. It's dark here. I sit in the car for a while, wondering what I'm doing. Wondering what the fuck I'm going to do. But something drives me. A feeling that if I don't do this, then the rest of my life is going to be ruined. I can't let that happen. I open the door and quickly get out. I pull out my phone and turn on the light, finding the small dirt trail that leads out to the inky blackness. The air is cool and I can smell the lake. Pretty soon I can hear it too. The soft, desolate sounds of the waves running against the thin strip of the shore. Mm. It's peaceful, but at the same time it terrifies me. And for a moment, I feel like the lake is one giant living thing. It dwarfs me with its presence, a giant, all-knowing thing. It knows I'm here. I shudder and force myself to continue. I find the shoreline, and the dry sand shifts under my feet as I take a right and follow the shore. I try to ignore the sounds of the lake, the feeling that it's watching me, beckoning me towards it. Finally, I come across the boulder that I'm looking for, the one that Carl used to craw- carve his drawings into. Of course, it would be something Carl used. That fat piece of shit. What is wrong with you, Chase? I kneel down beside it, moving the light of my phone around until I find the drawings. I look at the super wolf etched into the rock, glaring. Then I see a glint of light above it. I shift my phone light up to see that what it is. I gasp, and I can't help a ragged scream from escaping my throat. A tarantula sits there, staring back at me, its cluster of eyes shining in the darkness. I stumble back in the sand and fall, sitting down hard and causing my teeth to clack together. I scramble back up. I look around for a rock and quickly find it. When I turn back around and find the light, the spider is gone. I look around for a while, in case it just moved around, maybe on the ground closer to me. I don't see anything though, and I throw the rock at the lake, cursing the damn thing. Then I kneel down and look at the spot between the rocky ground and the boulder. It takes a few moments, and I have to get real close looking deeper into the crevice, and then, there's a glint of what looks like metal. I start to dig, first with my bare hands, then with the help of a flattened rock lying nearby. I'm sweating and gasping by the time I pull the thing free. It looks like an old lunchbox. (coughs) You okay? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm good. I I was about to continue, don't worry. I shine a light on it and can barely make out what looks like a cartoon dragon. I open it and pull out the note. I read it. In a fit of rage, I tear the stupid thing in half, 
throwing it on the ground. You fucker! I hiss it out through my teeth, then pull out the piece of paper that I'd taken out from one of Jenna's notebooks, along with a pen. I write for a moment, using the old lunchbox as a flat surface. When I'm done, I drop it into the box, then wedge the box into the crevice, covering it up with the loose stir I moved. I pack it down, then stand back up. Thinking twice, I pick up the shredded note and stuff it into my pocket. Then I walk back up the shore and up the trail, ignoring what looks like the eye shine, the eye shine of tarantulas all around me. Maybe it's just the stars. I don't remember much of the drive back or the parking lot of the motel. The next thing I know, I'm staying next to the bed, glaring down at TJ, watching him sleep. That's not creepy at all. Not one bit. It sound, it almost sounded like TJ, like Chase was like a murderer. Oh, no, it's fine. It's fine. Like it was scripted like a murder scene. It's all good. Mm -hmm. See? Look, it's the lunchbox. Okay. So things are going to be fine. Wait, what was what was did the note say again? I zoned out. It said it said we it it was not revealed to us what it said. Yeah, it's just something that pissed Chase off a lot. Chase read it and then uh hissed between his teeth, "You fucker." That's all we get to know. What is with Chase? It's almost like he well, is it, possessed. Sound, <clears throat> sounds like whatever it was, it was in the note was pretty bad, or Chase just really didn't like it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, or something's both. going on there. Yeah. Either way, uh... Chase, you got issues, man. Oh, it's fine. It's fine. All right, well, let's go fine. ahead and... It's we're gonna, fine. We're going to save this. There we go. All right. Well, that was Friday. So say goodbye, everyone. Bye, Bye. everyone.